from the characters. Thank you. We'd like to thank everybody for making 1986 such a great year for us. We had a great time playing all over the country and making lots of new friends. All of us. We got to play on both of you. We got to play on the radio and on television. Right now, I'd like to pass you over to John, though, because John would like to thank you for some things. Shahan. Thank you, Dan. Hi, everyone. This is John speaking. I'd like to thank all of you for the Christmas cards and presents, and especially the birthday thank cards and you. presents. Thank you, Chris. I'd like to now pass you on to Chris, who would also like to thank you for many, many good things. And John's book. Thank you, John. Uh, Chris here, I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas also. And also for coming down <laughs> to all the Los Angeles shows, the Washington, D.C. shows, the Philadelphia shows, and of course the New Jersey shows. And the shows in Guam. Ooh, and that was Bill. my favorite. And the one in Belgium. No, that was my favorite. The Philippines. No, that was my favorite. <laughs> had a lot of favorite shows. <laughs> That's right. And right now I'd like to hand you over to Larry. Hi everybody, Larry here. They pretty much covered all the bases, but I'd still like to thank everybody. We didn't cover, we didn't cover for being short so stuff. nice to us and for mailing us all the nice things. The pictures were nice, the cords were nice, the shoelaces were nice, the cat food was oh, nice. The Salvador Dali paintings were especially paintings nice. Were good. The television sets the were The okay. helicopter blades helicopter were blades. very useful. Shoelaces. And we thanked them for the shoelaces and the egg, egg timers and the timers were also very good. We also got two different the types of timers. The posters. home versions of Beat the Clock game. Beat the was Clock nice. was good. Also, the home version of Wheel of Fortune was really good. I We'd, especially like that one. We'd like to oh, also no. spend a special uh, thank you out to Rodney Bingenheimer. Hooray! Hey! Hey! Of KROQ FM for playing our stuff on the radio. He was the first one. And the wild man. Uh, again! Oh, oh, Quiet. First, there was... Thanksgiving. Wow. Wild. Whoa. Then there was Arbor Day. Wow. Then there was Christmas Day. Wow. <laughs> and now a brief musical interlude. Well, I'll have a blue Christmas without you, girl. I'll be so blue. Somewhere in the heartland of America, someone is trying to call the character's hotline. Hi, you've reached the hotline, and we're not here right now because we're going... Hi, you reached the Hester hotline! I'm not here right now, but how would you still like to have a bottom of my cookie? 
Logan! Five, six. You're gonna, you're gonna be seeing the characters? Yeah, they're, I, yeah, they're great. They're, they're gonna be playing there, and you know they're playing at the Roxy? Okay, sure, I'm like gonna be so psyched for these concerts. Okay. For third, I'll just be sitting around twiddling my thumbs. All right. <laughs> okay, well, let's, I wanna play you some characters right now, because you'll probably see them at the convention and at the Roxy. Let's hear some characters. You're on the air. The New York experience was mind-boggling. You're on the air. Let's find uh, brother up there. You're on the air. Here's your ballot. Next. You're on the air. Hi, Danny. You're on the air. I like it. Hello, you're on the air. I ruined. Next. Hi, guys. Next. Hi. It's me. It's me. It's me. You're on the air. Where's your magic musicians? You're on the air. Very particular. You're very on the air. Not to be seen. Not to be heard. You're on the air. Quiet. We now take you to St. Peter's at noon. Where El Cid is conversing with the contender. You're very smart, El Cid. And you give me a lot of answers. But you didn't give me the right answer. Now how do I get the Blix? Alright, what you gotta do, see, is take the freeway to exit 14C, and that'll put you right on Blix Street. That's not the right answer, El Cid. Alright, now, if you're having a problem going that way, what you do is, uh, you take the freeway to the next exit, you get off Blick Street, and you go up about a half a mile, and you get on South Blicks, and you go up to the Jung Hills, and it'll put you on Blick Street again, and you keep going to Blicks, and you make another left, and you go on a Blick Street again, and you go up around a Cloverleaf, and that puts you on another Blick Street, and you keep going again, and again, and again, and again, and again, Blick Street, and another left, and another right, and Blick Street, and another Blick, 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 gift from the Garden State. In fact, the rock and roll heroes of the Garden State, the characters, Danny Salazi, vocals, rhythm guitar, Chris Rizel, lead guitar, Larry Mulgire, bass, and John Greco drums, and they're hot in the Garden State. They've written, and they will give us their own performance of their own Marianne, characterizing the best in music today, presenting the characters. Gentlemen. We now take you back to Burnett Junior High School. The year is 1978. A young John Greco and Danny Salazi are busy doing their science project. Hey, John, I'm going to take this boiling chip and I'm going to put it on the burner and see if it changes colors or something. Uh, I don't know about that, Dan. Bonehead is definitely not going to dig that. I don't care. I'm just going to do it anyway. All right. Let me put it on here. Let me see. It's not changing colors yet, but it's getting hot right? already. Dan, knock that off of there. It was Bonehead. How's it going here, boys? Oh, an extra boiling chip. We have to keep our eyes on these. They are expensive. Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> ah, 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 what's so funny? You boys think this is funny? You boys are never gonna amount to anything! Oh, no! Hey, you've reached a... We're working on a hotline. We can't come to the phone right now because... We're working on it! Wait, wait, wait! Hi, you've reached the damn it, we should have taken the last scenic hotline. We can't come to the phone right now because Damn it, we, we should have taken La Sienica! Oh, oh, I told you she should have taken La Sienica! Next! Hi, this is Danny from the characters. One, two, three, four!
Christmas Eve Santa came to say Rudolph if you're not so bright Won't you guide my sleigh tonight Then how the reindeer loved him As he shouted out with glee Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer You'll go down in history The Land Merrick Show. <laughs> Thank you. Tonight in the program, we have Mr. Miles Davies. And Miles, what would you like to say to all the people out there? I play first, and then I spit. Merry Christmas, baby. <laughs> oh, and then I went to some parties with him, and I gave him this real interesting tape. It's a tape by a band that was in town last week called The Characters, and um, they played at the Monkees Convention, and they did a lot of monkey songs. They also do their own music as well. Anyway, they happened to do a song here about one of the members of Bananarama, who I was powing around with, uh, Siobhan. Anyway, here's a song about Siobhan of Bananarama done by The Characters. Here it is. A lot of people. We forgot to thank, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Cloris Leachman. Uh, Cloris. She came down to Washington yeah. and hung out with us. Don't forget about Peter Brady. Ooh, oh, Johnny yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rudy Kazuti, we forgot to thank. And we also, I forgot to thank Vanna White for sending me this harmonica. Oh, Vanna. What about, uh, that's very nice. The Hester family. Huh? Wait, oh, terrific. Oh, what about terrific. the Hester family, right? Da 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 da. Da 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 da. How'd you like right. to have a bite of my cookie? Yeah. Don't forget about Wally Cleaver. Wally, and oh, yeah, Colonel yeah. Sanders and Jerry... Oh, that chicken. There was Jerry Reed. Yeah, and his Ooh, I said that already. Uh, and, oh, uh, you said Jerry Reed. How about the man who, who sold you this thing? Make the noise. Thank you. I'd like to, I'd like oh, to say... Very nice man. I'd like to thank... And I'd like to thank... That's very nice. Far away, some angels are singing. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, brown young virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild. The 1986 Fan Club Christmas Cassette was recorded December the 7th and 8th at SRA Studios in Scotch Plains, New Jersey on an Akai MG1212 12-track machine. The characters had previously recorded their song Miss America for lip-syncing purposes for their appearance on the Joe Franklin Show a few weeks earlier and liked working at the SRA studio. Most of the skits were based on events that actually happened to the band. Bonehead and the Boiling Chip was a retelling of an 8th grade incident from when Danny and John were lab partners in science class. Songs include Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, complete with shouting of in-joke phrases over the solo, Blue Christmas and Silent Night. The band gets lost on Blick Street, Len Merrick spits, we meet Hester and someone says E. The E Hotline. That was uh, that was with Danny and I. Danny and I were uh, down on the Jersey Shore. I believe it was Seaside Heights or Seaside Seaside Park in New Jersey, and uh, we were staying at a friend's house, and we were hanging out on the porch. And all of a sudden, a guy came out on the porch, no m- names mentioned, and just started going E. Like, what's that all about? (laughs) The hotline was my friend Michael, and uh, now he's famous for that. Blick Street. Blicks. That's an interesting one. We were in Los Angeles, I believe in the Valley. 
we were living out there. We had to meet somebody uh, on Blick Street, and we had the address, and all we had was a road map. Of course, back then, there was no navigation or computers to guide your way. And uh, we were on Blix, we were looking for the number, and the road just ended and before we reached the number that we were looking for. So uh, we made a left, uh, then a right, then another right, and a left, and we were back on Blix again, and the numbers kept getting higher, and we were looking for the number of the house or building, and uh, the road ended again. So we had to make another left, and another right, and another right, and another left, until we got back on Blix. And we actually did this several times until we actually found the correct address Blick Street, yeah, that was, uh, that was a mess. We couldn't find the place we were going to. And the funny thing is, at the end of that skit, we're referencing Monty Python. When they do their spam skit, and at the end of their spam, their spam skit, they're going spam, 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 spam. And so we start going Blicks, 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 Blicks. Uh, Blick Street, that was, uh, we were going to this guy's house who was doing some artwork for us for t-shirts. And uh, he lived on Blick Street, we had the uh, number for his house on Blick Street, but um, the street kept on like zigzagging and then it came to a dead end, to a highway, and it, we were like, now what? Uh, but it actually continued on the other side of the highway and then zigzagged some more, <laughs> it just kept on going. We finally got there though. The Len Merrick Show. That was uh, a twisting of a name of a kid we went to school with who talked like, good evening, <laughs> how are you, <laughs> like that. And so um, the guest on the show was Miles Davis. That was our pretend guest. And we combined two things. We, uh, I had seen a commercial where he's talking about a scooter or something like that. And he said, um, I play first and then, I, and then I ride or something like that. And then the other thing that I had seen the same year uh, was him talking about apartheid on TV. And he was saying, I spit when I see apartheid. So we combined, <laughs> we combined it to, I play first and then I spit. Merry Christmas, baby. La Cienica, that was the first time the characters ever went out to California. We were being picked up at the uh, airport by some guy that was sent from the hotel and uh he ends up getting on the 405 405 freeway heading north up to hollywood and we hit all this traffic and he's getting all upset that we're stuck in all this traffic and he keeps on saying damn it i should have taken la sienica damn it i should have taken la sienica and we just thought all right i guess he should have taken la sienica <laughs> we should have taken la sienica we uh we were just arriving in California for the first time and the uh, Hollywood Holiday Inn had sent a guy to pick us up and drive us from the airport to the hotel. And actually it was the guy and his son and me and Chris got in his vehicle and the other two guys got in the son's vehicle and the son took La Cienica, which I guess he got there before us and we were stuck in all this traffic, but he um, drove like a maniac. And it was just crazy because we 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 uh, we didn't think we were going to even get there alive. And the whole time he kept saying, "Damn it, we should have taken La Cienica. We should the kid took La Cienica. We should have taken La Cienica." So he made it into our Christmas cassette, and he has no idea. We're working on it. That was a a, a thing that a club owner used to, that we used to, a club owner of a place we used to play called the Dirt Club used to say. His name was Johnny Dirt. Uh, he always just his thing that he always used to say was, "We're working on it. We're working on it." He's working on it. <laughs> We're working on it. That was uh, Johnny Dirt's famous catchphrase. He had many famous catchphrases, but that was the one that we used to like to walk around and go, "We're working on it." Uh, yeah, Johnny Dirt, the owner of the Dirt Club in Bloomfield, New Jersey. That was a famous line of his that he would always say, no matter what you asked him, uh, Johnny, uh, what are we going to do about this, or what are we going to do about that, or when are we playing next? His answer was, we're working on it. That was his answer to everything he had to say. Just a roundabout way of uh, not really giving you an answer. But uh, Johnny, of course, was legendary in the original club scene in North Jersey. Uh, very influential. A lot of bands started out there. And we were fortunate enough to uh, play that room quite often. I uh, had a great time there. 
Bonehead and the Boiling Chip. That was uh, something that happened to me and John Greco. We were eighth grade lab partners, and we were supposed to be doing this experiment where um, you use a boiling chip to put in the water, and I, I don't know what it's supposed to do because I wasn't really paying attention when they were explaining it. But um, you were supposed to put it in the water for some reason, but instead of putting it in the water, uh, we put it, or I put it on the top of the little Bunsen burner thing to see if it would change colors. That's That was my only curiosity about it, was to see if I could make it turn red. And um, so we put it up there, and then the teacher started walking towards us, and John said, you better knock that thing off because we're gonna get in trouble. So we knocked it off, and uh, it landed on the table, and he saw it, and he didn't realize it was scolding hot, and he went and picked it up, and he started, you know, screaming at us that we were never gonna amount to anything, so. Uh, how that goes. Bonehead and the Boiling Chip. That's a classic. Uh, it's legendary in the halls of Burnett Junior High School. Uh, yeah, John and Danny had this teacher for science class. I actually had the class also, but not at the same time as them. I was in a different uh, class for that. But I did have that teacher, and uh, yeah, uh, Danny had put a boiling chip on the Bunsen burner to see if it would turn red as it got hot. It did not turn red, but it got very hot. He knocked it off the burner when the teacher was approaching. And, of course, the teacher uh, picked it up to put it back where it belonged and burned his hands. And the rest of that is just uh, stuff of legends. How'd you like a bite of my cookie? That goes all the way back to when I was in grammar school. I was sitting in the lunchroom, and there was a kid sitting at the table across from me and he was um, having a gaucho cookie, and he took a bite of it, and then uh, there's another part of the story that I'm not gonna include here, but he said to the girls that were sitting across from him, want a bite of my cookie? So I saw it, and I thought, that's really weird and you know strange, but I never said anything to anybody. And then years later, we were talking about you know kids from school, and this guy's name came up, and I told the guys the story, and we were just dying, and we would walk around for weeks, quoting How'd You Like a Bite of My Cookie, and then <laughs> when it was put on the Christmas cassette, uh, we had kids actually showing up to the shows with like posters that said, Want a Bite of My Cookie, and the best part of the whole thing is that uh, this guy said this back in the 70s. Uh, he has no idea that uh, somebody heard him say that and didn't tell anybody, and then years later he wound up on the character's Christmas. And people are holding posters up with his phrase. Hi, I'm Seth Alexander from SRA Studios in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. And 35 years ago, almost to the day, Danny and the characters were right here in this studio recording their uh, Christmas message to their fans. And it was uh, a fun, zany session, and I remember it. At that time, I had an Akai MG-1212 12-track recorder, which I was very proud because some studios only had eight tracks. I had 12, which was four more tracks that the characters could fill up with their zany antics. Anyhow, the session was a lot of fun, guys. I was glad to be a part of your musical journey.